Thank you so much for all of your support in this project, whether it's by tuning into these videos, sharing them, liking them on social media, or even donating to the GoFundMe. I am incredibly grateful for your support. I got to choose three really wonderful organizations who are supporting artists in this very difficult time of COVID-19. And I know why I love the organizations, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to learn a little bit more about them. So I have interviewed the leaders of these three organizations uh, so that you can learn a little bit more about who they are, what their organization does, and how their organization has been impacted by the pandemic. One of the organizations that I have chosen to support is the Hochstein Music School in Rochester, New York. Hochstein holds a very special place in my heart because it is there where I studied piano uh, when I was in junior high and the beginning of high school. So I had the opportunity to sit down with the uh, executive director of the school, uh, Margaret Quackenbush, and she told me a little bit about what Hochstein has been doing in this time to keep their students engaged, uh, and also what it's been like to celebrate their 100th year. So, Peggy, I just wanted to thank you so much for doing this uh, for me and this project that, that I'm doing. Um, I have a, such a very special place in my heart for Hochstein, and, um, and I knew that when I came up with an idea about wanting to sort of give to the arts community and figure out a way to help even on the smallest scale, um, Hochstein was the first place that, that I, I thought of. So, so what I wanted to do was just, uh, I know all of the wonderful things about Hochstein, mm -hmm. but the people that may be watching this video might not know anything. So if you want to just tell us sort of a little bit of who you are and um, what Hochstein is and what's your history with Hochstein. Thank you so much, Regina. It's really a treat to talk with you. Um, so I'm Peggy Quackenbush. I'm the president and executive director of the Hochstein School. And uh, it's been my privilege to work with Hochstein and for Hochstein for many, many years. Um, so I go way back to starting as a clarinet teacher part-time many years ago and had the pleasure of joining with the administrative staff and then later becoming the executive director. So uh, it's, just, it's just such an amazing place. And uh, I've always wanted to be a part of this community a community of musicians and dancers and audiences and family and uh, people from all over our greater Rochester community. And so that it's this community and we serve people of all ages. Our youngest uh, students are six months old and um, our oldest is six months old. Six months wow. old. Oh my classes goodness. For, classes for babies with parents, of course. <laughs> we needed we need parents. But um, Yeah, oh yeah. Well you, you don't just put them in a room together and just No. <laughs> no, but it is so much fun to to uh, help parents learn how to do music with their children and then take that home with them. Right. And then our I think our eldest students are in their nineties. So uh, it's just a real a real thrill to be working with people all the time who are passionate about music and dance, uh, people who are beneficiaries of our expressive arts program, who have music therapy, dance therapy, and art therapy uh, services, and who grow and, and benefit in so many ways from that. And uh, to be working with such a di diverse population of every description in any way you can imagine. It's, an amazing coming together and it's it helps us all connect with each other which is what I care so deeply about. So how uh, how big is your faculty now? It, it it varies in numbers from year to year but it's it's always at least a hundred people 
we, we grow a little bit more in the summer with some people who teach only in our summer programs and then others who teach only in the school year. So it's well over 100 all the time if we, if we look at everything together. And how many students are you servicing? About 3,500 per year. Wow. And that's uh, with about, you know, about almost a third of that, not quite, but almost a third is in our expressive arts program out in the community. We work with a lot of agencies and organizations that work with people with disabilities and other special needs. And, um, and then, you know, we have a lot of students, dance students and, and people from all over the community. Oh, that's incredible. And it's not just lessons, right? You, you have many right. ensembles and others. So what, what other programs do you offer? So, yes, I mean, individual lessons are, of course, core to any music school program. And, um, and that's, that's significant and sustaining, of course, all the time. But we have lots of other kinds of classes, including musicianship classes for children, music theory and history for teenagers and adults, um, you know, and then all kinds of ensembles um, classes. Um, an orchestra program that includes four four levels of student orchestras, uh, two wind symphonies, children's choirs, children's and youth choirs, I should say, um, and, and then chamber music of all manner of description. And then things like jazz ensemble, rock bands, um, and then workshops and things. We've increasingly been adding workshops and learning experiences for adults that, are, that tend to be shorter term classes, like maybe an eight week ukulele class, for example. Yeah. We have a thriving little community of ukulele players in our school. And, uh, and we've added things like last year, uh, bagpipes was our most popular adult class. So, <laughs> wow, where do you put that class? That has to be somewhere. Else. Yeah, they don't get the whole. They don't get the whole deal right away. They, yeah. So far, they're working with chanters. I think anything with bagpipes would be in a park somewhere. <laughs> Yes, there you go. Oh, yeah. my goodness. that's incredible. That's incredible. And tell me a little bit. So uh, and I know that I benefited greatly from this um, when I studied there. I think I I was a student there from the time that I was in sixth grade through 10th grade, I think, when okay. I was in Rochester. And um, and so I took piano lessons with uh, Joe Werner. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I also took I took theory classes there. And then Joe had a group of his uh, core students that we did a, um, a, a piano accompanying class or, uh -huh. or a, like a little chamber class, which was incredible. But the, the, the one thing that I benefited from uh, greatly was that um, I was the recipient of a scholarship program for several of those years, and mm -hmm. and I believe that that um, there the pay scale, the fee scale is is uh, sliding so that that people can pay what they can afford, what their families can afford. Exactly right. Exactly right. So I I think you're probably talking about our merit scholarship program, which was yeah. by audition and you know selected. Uh, by a panel of judges and so on. And there were some performance opportunities for the winners, things like that. And we're still very proud of that program. And um, I don't know if you remember, but in the in the main hall, we had a we have a display case and the photographs and the little bios of each of the winners who goes up and stays up all year. And that seems Aww. to be the, the prize that matters the most to the students who participate mm -hmm. in that program. But the yes central part or, or a, a also a very important central part of our, our, our mission is the tuition assistance program and that provides need-based support for any tuition that uh, for any of our programs so anyone can participate that's what we're about excellence and access to that excellence and so so we don't want anybody to not participate in our programs by by because bear, money is a barrier Right. So um, last year, for example, we awarded nearly or, or something around two hundred eighty thousand dollars in tuition assistance awards. So it makes it possible for for many, many, many people to participate who just couldn't otherwise. Absolutely, making it accessible to everybody. 
That's right. That is incredible. Um, okay, let's talk about the big giant uh, viral elephant in the room. <laughs> and uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about sort of what, uh, what was happening as you sort of saw the world starting to shut down and, and COVID-19 becoming a, a very large part of one's existence and, and how yeah. to deal with that? What, what happened? Well, I think, you know, I don't know what it was like in every other locale, but in Rochester, at least, it was, you know, it was almost the middle of March before it, it really hit mm -hmm. that this was something we had to address. Mm -hmm. Probably the second week of March, it began to dawn that, okay, things were gonna, things were gonna start changing. And we had already, for example, some of our community contracts in expressive arts, serving people with disabilities, had already started to decline services and said, we're not having anybody visit. And they had a vulnerable population and it was only another week before we said okay uh the schools the schools said on a friday they were going to be open <laughs> remain open because there were very few cases in monroe county at that time and then the next day they changed their mind said we're closed we're closing all the schools in the county are closing so in the mid middle of a saturday so did we um okay we, have, we won't be open anymore after today. And, mm -hmm. uh, and our teachers uh, and our staff rallied very quickly. And although we were not at all prepared for this, uh, completely to remote learning. Yeah. Everything that could happen. That, it, that wasn't 100%, but everything that could happen, continued to happen. Just right. This. And, and so how, uh, how did the faculty sort of embrace that? What, what, and the faculty and the students, what, what was their response? The vast majority said, okay, if this is what we have to do, this is what we'll do. And, uh, and they adapted, they, they, they banded together, faculty started sharing resources with each other about ways to do things, some equipment where necessary. Um, and some support um, and then we you know everybody just moved on and the most the, the majority of our students did too we we had about you know between 80 and 85 percent of the students said okay for individual lessons for some of the classes much harder to do um, but some things kept going our our children's ballet classes kept going uh, eventually our our classes for older students kept going and um, our tap dance classes kept going although our tap dance teacher says her neighbor downstairs is about to kill her but, oh yeah i would but, imagine yeah yeah but everybody has managed and you know done the best they can so i'm very very proud of their resilience and their creativity and their and their willingness to adapt that's fantastic Stay connected because that's the most important thing is just staying connected with with those people Absolutely. And, and these um, on, online learning is continuing through the summer. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So has there been any indication? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm down here in New York, and even though I'm in a different county than New York, you know, we sort of are hearing what is allowed to open, and we're in a different mm -hmm. phase than, than New York City is. Um, but mm -hmm. I know that up there is, is different as well. Yeah. What, have you been able to make any decisions about the fall or anything yet, or are you waiting? No decisions really can be made because our type of industry, and if you know, we, we tend to think of ourselves as education rather than performance even or anything like that. And um, so there's been no decision about schools opening in the fall. We don't expect that to happen for at least a few weeks, although we have no idea. Um, so we're, we're trying to plan for both options um, and we'll have to just roll with however it goes. Um, you know, we will, we will be continuing to look for guidance yeah. from, uh, you know, we're very interested in some of the research that's being done currently that we, we hope to hear about in the next few weeks. Yeah. That will help us 
make informed decisions and we have a we have a contingency planning task force that's working very hard to figure out what are our options how can we how can we do our best to sustain our programs and, and our people absolutely Well, the last thing that I want you to talk to us about is that this is a very big year for Hochstein. Yeah. This is a hundredth year anniversary of Hochstein. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, we're just so, we're just so proud of the history of the school, you know, and a hundred years is a big, a big thing to, That's for, a big deal. for any organization to get to. And, um, so we've, we've really enjoyed the opportunity to look back a little bit, kind of, review some of our history, share it with other people. We had some, we've had some wonderful media about the school and its history. We've, we had some very special concerts right at the top of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, a gathering of alumni actually in January, our first alumni concert ever. And uh, that, was, that was just remarkable. And in February, our four student orchestras put on a concert that featured as the finale, the the, uh, the finale of, of movement of the um, Pines of Rome, of mm. and with all 186 students of those four orchestras playing together, spread out all over the performance hall, in the aisles, in the balcony, in the uh, stairwells, everything, and, as well as grabbing the stage. <laughs> and uh, it was phenomenal and, and exciting. And we had more grand things planned, of course, throughout the rest of 2020, including a big gala that was to happen right at the end of March, mm. of course, for naught. But we, you know, nevertheless, we're continuing to be proud of our 100th, and, and it will be a unique one. <laughs> yes, one for the um, history books. <laughs> to look back upon, but we will continue to celebrate as, as we do all the time, because the real celebration is about our people. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I am very grateful to you and I'm very grateful to Hochstein. And I just, I, I'm thrilled to hear that, that you're still thriving among uh, this very challenging situation that, that is going on, that we're all experiencing together. Um, but, uh, but I'm grateful for you and, and I'm just so glad that I can uh, be of service in some way. Thank you, Regina. It's really, it's really touching and heartwarming to have your support and uh, to know that the school meant a lot to you. Um, and, you know, that help, helping to carry that message really means a lot to us. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to help support Del Arte Opera Ensemble, the Artist Relief Tree, or the Hochstein Music School, please visit my GoFundMe page and give. Give as much as you can. Even a dollar would help so much in reaching our goal. Thanks so much, and keep enjoying the music.